Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. I'm really excited about this collaboration with John Audio Tech, and I want to get that power supply design on the, on the way. I was going to do a video tonight on the first part of the design, and then I opened up this box that I bought. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm spending too much money. Man, um, couldn't help myself. I bought an ice power amplifier. So I want to review that real quick. As a matter of fact, I even started it tonight. But it got me thinking. The power supply designs I've seen in these Class D amplifiers, even in these ice powers, which are really well-respected uh, amplifiers, I, I believe, right? Uh, a guy who did a lot of work in Class D has had a lot of notoriety. And uh, he did this design. I mean, it's kind of his d baby. But um, anyway, uh, I'm going to show you that in the video coming up. So what it did is it raised the question. What kind of power supply should we design? I need to know that so I can get started, right? All right, so here's the deal. Here's your normal input of your power supply, right? Uh, what the so-called linear power supplies. Really, they're low-frequency switchers, as I've explained before. These diodes commutate. They turn on and off, charge up a capacitor. That's a switching power supply, just low frequency switching. It's switching at 60 hertz here in the U.S. or you know 50 hertz somewhere else. But uh, then, if you linear regulate, then you can call it linear power supply. Otherwise, it's a low frequency switcher, guys. So the ice power does this. There's a lot of uh, class D amplifiers I've seen that just do this kind of power supply. They low frequency switch it just like your so-called linear power supplies, and then they use a switcher to regulate the outputs. If they put a linear power supply, which I'm gonna do one of those eventually too, part of this uh, project, and then it'll be a true linear power supply, otherwise just a low frequency switcher, okay? So do we want a low frequency switcher powering our switching power supply, or do we want to add this stage? This is a power factor correction. It's active power factor correction because you actually can do it passively. It just doesn't work as well. It's big and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a lot easier to do active power factor correction. So it's essentially a boost regulator. It is a boost regulator. It's just a, it operates on a pulsating DC input. So this capacitor is very small. So you still get the pulsating DC at this point. It's not like this. It's not making these diodes commutate. And what, what happens over here, right? At the top of the waveform, it, the diodes turn on and they spit out a bunch of current and then they turn off, okay? Low frequency switching. Up here, they're not doing that. They're putting out uh, current all the time into this capacitor because it's very small. It doesn't charge up and you don't have to wait for the diode to overcome the, the charge. This capacitor is only there for filtering as this guy's switching on and on, on and off. So as this guy switches on and off and the pulse comes up, I've got videos on this, I'll put a link down below, but it starts making these little pulses. So you get a little current, a little more current, a little more current. Towards the top of the waveform, you get more current and then it drops down again. And so a whole bunch of pulses, square waves, and you smooth it out over here, and the current looks more sinusoidal over here. So, and it's in phase with the voltage. So, power factor corrected. So, if our amplifier turns out to be, say, pulling 500 watts, which, you know, let's just say it is, then over here it's going to look like, you know, 7 or 800 VA. Now, over here, if we have power factor correction, if we're pulling 500 watts, it's going to look like just barely over 500 VA, say 550 VA, something like that maybe. Do we care? Once we regulate, uh, the voltage over here don't care what's happening over here. They just don't care. So uh, as far as standards and stuff go, you may not have to put PFC in unless you're over 500 watts. Uh, we don't really have to worry about that because these are our own little projects. But, um, you know, 500 watts, you might not have to care, or below 500 watts. So, what do you guys think? Which way should we go? Should we go, you know, full 10 yards 
and do the whole thing, or should we go this way? That's the question. <laughs> uh, I'm all ready to start. I know which way, know which way to go. Start showing you what chips we're using, how to do, design the circuits. If we do the active power factor correction, I'll start with that. I'll show you how to design that. And uh, by the time we're done, the the idea is that you can use my recipe to design your own power supplies. Even if you have to tweak them for different input, different output voltages, you can just tweak them. And I think I'm going to cover it well enough that you'll feel confident enough to do that. Okay. You know, the first time you do something, there's always a little bit of, you know, um, you know, fear of the unknown, I guess. But once you've done it the one time, then confidence level goes way up, right? Once you've done it twice, then you're like a master. So, anyway, watching this video series, I think uh, you guys are going to become power supply guys. <laughs> so, yeah, either way we go, you're going to learn something because that switch mode power supply, that, that isolated stage where we have a transformer, where we have to isolate the, the grounds and all that stuff, that in itself is going to be a story, okay? That's going to take more time than the PFC stage. But uh, do we need to add the, the complexity, the extra circuits and stuff for the PFC? Or do we keep it simpler? Let me know. <laughs> I, I'm thinking because we're up around 500 VA, if that's what we're trying to do, 500 watts, then for me, I think, ah, PFC, it's, it's beginning to become something that might be useful, might be important. If you want to do higher power amplifiers in the future, we could always add it later. On a higher power amp maybe this power amp we uh, we probably don't need a full 500 watts um, I think John was throwing it out there to give him some margin but we're gonna have plenty of margin so what do you guys think hey I want to thank my patrons uh, I got a new patreon since my last video thanks so much I'm not sure if I can use names so I just really appreciate my patrons and uh, you can become a patron um, Links down below. I appreciate that. Um, also, this this ice. I can't wait to review this. Okay, 125 watts per channel, power supply, everything all on one board. So pretty cool. I'll, I'll review this. I hope I'm gonna. Uh, Father's Day weekend's coming up. In a few days. I'll try to get this up for that. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. And oh, and there's uh, next to the thumbs up button, which I hope you give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me comments, vote on which way you want to go, okay? Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's another like button down there. It's a thank you button or something like that. And you can tip me a cup of coffee or whatever, a buck or two or something like that. I don't know how exactly how that works. Uh, I think one guy's used it already. Really appreciate uh, that. That was awesome. That was pretty amazing. Uh, I wonder if I can use his name. I should ask him. Maybe I should start putting him up on the wall. <laughs> It'll probably take me a long time to fill the wall. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Uh, my wife's in bed. I'm. It's really late, and I got to go to bed too. So otherwise, I would work on this video more tonight. But I've already done some work on it. So all right, we'll see ya. Thanks for watching.